Hello, this is Sean again, and I want to take you through step two for prepping your Adobe Premiere project for audio post uh, collaboration. Um, in part two, we're going to walk you through how to export the video properly. Um, and surprisingly, uh, there's only a few ways to do it right, but there's a lot of ways to do it wrong. And we're going to continue on from our last video. So we already have everything set up. So let's go ahead and start right away. We're going to go to File export media and from here um, your source range you can use it work area or entire sequence whatever you prefer but the most thing that we're most concerned about is the format now before I go too far along um, this video assumes that you already have some codecs installed some professional collaboration codecs such as the Avid DNX HD codec um, I'll go ahead and incl include a link into the description box where you can download that from if you don't have it installed. It's a open source codec from Avid um, that allows um, people to have the same kind of quality across the board when collaborating. It was mainly generally um, used for uh, offlining process, um, but it works wonderfully for our purposes. Um, it's a very light, uh, very CPU light codec. So it doesn't drag down uh, your audio guy's uh, computer or drag down your own computer while rendering. So we're going to go ahead and choose format and then we're going to use QuickTime. And the preset doesn't matter because we're going to customize everything. You want to make sure export video and export audio is checked. And the summary doesn't matter. We're going to go down to video Kodak. And a Kodak we are not going to use H.264. Um, that's not frame accurate, and for collaboration, you need frame accuracy. Um, I already have the Avid pack installed, and I'm going to choose Avid DNX HD. Now, for, for whatever reason, you don't want to install Kodak, and you just say, no, it doesn't work for me, I can't do that, or I won't do it because I've had problems with external Kodaks before, I completely understand it. However, you're not going to have be able to export it in HD. Um, you're going to have to use DV. The quick way to use DV is use this preset down here and use you know, NTSC DV 24P or 24P widescreen depending on your project. Um, you would just use that and literally scroll down make sure render maximum depth is unchecked, audio is already uncompressed and then you would just go ahead and hit Q or export. However, we want to export in HD. So we're going to go ahead and go back. I'll choose the first. I'll choose this preset just for the sake of it. So video Kodak, we're going to go ahead and go up and choose Avid DNX HD. And it's going to have a button that says Kodak Settings. Let me go ahead and bring it on the screen because it pops up on my other screen. And it's going to give you a couple different levels. Um, options here go ahead and just leave everything the default and where it says resolutions this is important if you have a 1080p project and it's at 24 frames a second you want to choose the 1080p 23976 36 8 bit this is going to give you the smallest file possible with um, frame accuracy if you only have a 720p video um, you can probably do the same thing. It'll stretch out a bit. It won't matter either way. Um, however, if you want to be more picky about it, you can use 720p 24. I'm sorry, 2397, 68 bit. It's a higher uh, um, bit rate. However, um, it, it would be a wash with the 24p uh, 1080p 24. Um, I'm sorry, 1080p 23976. You want to use it, make sure it matches exactly what your project is. Um, in this case, mine is a 297, 2997 project, so I want to scroll up and look for that. Now, the one that clo most closely matches it is down here, so it's right here 2080p, 2997, 45, 8 bit. I'm going to click OK. There, we can breathe. And now that's off the screen, you're going to scroll down. Make sure your quality is set to 100%. Your width and height of your video, your frame rate should be set. 
field order, you typically want to leave this as progressive, especially if you're going to YouTube in the end, but you always want to have this progressive for uh, collaborating with audio. Uh, square pixels, that's fine. Um, render at maximum depth, make sure that's unchecked. Um, depth, make sure it's set for 24 bit. And everything else should be a limited, a le left alone. Audio, you want to make sure this is set to uncompressed. And it will be set to 48K or 48,000 hertz. Channel, channel stereo, 16 bit. And make sure you uncheck the boxes as use maximum render quality. Now, at this point, all you have to do is name your output file. You click this and give it a name. I would typically name it as um, something that represents your project. So, you know, XYZ, you know, project. Let's say X, XYZ you know, project, you know, video for audio. You can go ahead and click save. And now that's ready to be exported. You can, depending on your workflow, you can click on Q or export. And then I'll go ahead and export out and that video will be ready. Again, if you don't want to install Codex, I understand. I would highly recommend that you install the Avid Codex at minimum. Uh, most other uh, editors do install at least two major codecs, the Avid one and another one to work in. Um, as a sound mixer, I have to use a lot of codecs because of a lot of the projects I receive in. So I'm going to go ahead and click export. And it's going to say encoding the sequence. And like most HD projects, it sh will take a while. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this video. And we'll pick up when we're ready for exporting the audio. And that will be the last portion of this three-part series. Thanks a lot, and I'll be right back.